let's talk about population size estimates using mark recapture in open populations. So previously when we did the Peterson or the Schnabel mark recapture, we were looking at a closed population. And so we had several assumptions and you'll recall that some of those assumptions were there are no births and no immigration. And that we could also have deaths and immigrate and emigration, but it had to be equal between the marked and the unmarked. That is for a closed population. But we can also do a population size estimate for open populations. And in an open population, you have fish coming and going, and you have fish being born and dying. And so you don't have the restrictive assumptions that you do with a closed population estimate. So an open population might be more realistic. Certainly it is for things like river populations or large reservoirs. And another advantage of the open population estimate is that we can do these over a longer period of time because we're not worried about births and immigration and deaths and immigration. And so you can do this study over years instead of weeks. The trade-off is probably you get less precision with the open population estimate. And so a very common method for estimating population size in open populations is called the Jolly Sieber method. And so that's what we're going to look at today. This method requires that we know the last date on which we saw each fish. And so we need to give each fish an individual mark. And so that way we can tell on which date we caught each fish. At the very least, we need to give a unique mark to all the fish caught on a certain date. And if you do that, then every time you get a recap, you need to record that recap. You'll record based upon the, the unique tag, you can tell when was the last time I caught this fish, but then you'll need to re-tag it based upon that day's unique mark. So anytime we get a recap, we have to be able to tell when was the last time we saw this fish. That's the critical data. And so if we do that, um, we can summarize the data in a table or a spreadsheet that looks something like this. And if you look at this summary table, you'll see across the top we have the time of capture. We have each sample date. And then um, going down the row, we also have the time of last capture. And so for each sample date, we summarize how many fish were caught on that date and we break that down by the time of last capture. And so if you don't use individual marks on your fish, if you are just marking each fish uniquely on each date, you have to summarize your data in a table like this. If you look across a row, you can see how we can get an estimate for the number of recaps for each sample date, right? Because if you summed across the row, those would all be recaps from a particular sample date. And if you look along the bottom, you can also see that we summarize like how many we caught each sample and how many are marked and unmarked in each sample. And so the, all these values are very similar to what we used for the Peterson or the Schnabel calculations. And so we're using kind of the same values, but in different formulas. Um, and that's how we're going to end up getting this estimate. Now, I'll confess that I don't quite understand the math as well as I do with the closed population estimates, but this is a, um, a well-used type of estimate. And so we're going to use it. We're going to use R to do these calculations. Now, most of the time, when you do this, you're going to have individual marks for each fish. It's just a lot easier to have an individual ID for each fish. And it makes the recording the data much easier. So all you have to do is every time you sample, um, you record all fish IDs on that date. And so you record the IDs from any recaps you get, and then any unmarked fish get marked, and of course you'll record their ID on that date. By doing this, you're able to form what's known as a capture history for each fish. And so from the capture history, you can tell what was the original day 
that you caught and marked this fish and on how many dates after that it was recaptured. So you might recapture the same fish two or three times. And again, what's going to be important to Jolly Seaver is when was the last time you captured this fish. But the software can take the capture history and pull out all the pertinent information. And so let's go ahead and work through an example. This is just an example I made up. It's a, a study in which we were looking at silver carp. And in this study, we sampled once per year around June 1. And we repeated this for six years. And each time we caught a fish, we gave it a unique tag with a unique ID number on it. And of course, for each fish, we record every time that fish is captured. Not just the first day it was captured, but every subsequent time it was recaptured, we record that date. So once we have those data, we're going to summarize the catch data in Excel. And then we're going to import that into R. We're going to use the FSA package and the Jolly Seaver method to estimate population size. So let's do that. So now we're looking at an Excel spreadsheet with our raw data in it. And so this is how I would record the data. Um, if you look here, we just have two columns, fish ID and date. And that's all we need. So for each fish, we just record the, every date, every time we see that fish. And so this first date is when we first caught the, a group of fish and they all got tagged. And then for any of these fish, if we ever later recaptured them, we would enter them in a new row with that new date. And so if you scroll to the bottom, you see I've got several thousand, couple thousand rows here. and that's how I'm going to record the raw data. But this is not good enough. Um, we need to convert this data into a data frame that we can use in R. And so here's how I want to do that. I'm going to summarize using a pivot table. So I'm going to select cell A1. I'm going to go to insert, pivot table. And you see all my data are selected. And I'm going to hit OK. And so I need each fish to have its own row. So I'm going to take fish ID and drag it down here to rows. And so now you see that each row has a unique fish ID. And I need to record when that fish was seen, uh, you know, every date on which that fish was seen. So I'm going to make date as the columns. Now you notice that in pivot tables, Excel likes to do this. When you have a date, it likes to, to group them which would be fine in this particular example, but I'd like to ungroup that. So I'm going to right click and ungroup. And here you see each of the individual dates. And so to summarize when each fish was seen on each date, I'm just going to take fish ID again and drag it down here to values. And it's automatically going to, this time it chose count of values, which is what I want. If it didn't choose count, you just click on this, choose value field settings and change it to count. But it already picked count. And so now what you're seeing is kind of a capture history. You see it's got a one every time we saw that particular fish. So this fish was originally captured in 2013, but then it was recaptured in 2014. Same with this fish. And so that's what I need to use in R. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I need to copy these data. So I'm going to select this first one and copy across, but I'm not going to choose, I'm not going to get the grand total. And then I'm going to go Control, Shift, Down Arrow. And I've selected everything, and I'm going to go Control, C. And I'm going to make a new file. And I'm going to select this cell and go Control, V to paste. And so there I've pasted all those data. Now I'm going to use Control, Down Arrow. To jump to the bottom because I don't want this final, it's a, this grand total. I'm going to select it, right click, and delete it. And now I'm going to control up arrow to jump back up to the top. And so now I just need to label this. So I'm going to come back to my pivot table and I'm going to go back to the top. And I need the labels for each of those columns. So I'm going to control C go to my new 
file, select this cell, and go Control V. Now this first column is the fish ID, and I want these to show up, so I'm going to select all the cells, and I'm going to double click between a couple of columns, and there you go. And so that's my capture history, and the only problem is these blank cells. Those are no good for me. I need to have zeros on those dates in which I did not capture each particular fish. So all these blank cells need to be filled in with zero. So let me show you how to do that quickly. I'm going to select A1 and I'm going to go shift control right arrow and shift control down arrow. And so I've selected that whole range of cells and then I'm going to go to the Home tab and go to Find and Select, Go to Special. And then under Go to Special, I'm going to choose Blanks. And when I hit OK, you'll see that all those blank cells are now highlighted. So now before I do anything, I don't want to click anywhere. I want to keep those cells highlighted. And so I'm going to type 0. And then I'm going to hold down Control and hit the return button. And what that does is in every cell that was highlighted, it types that value. It types that zero value. And so now I can click off and now I have exactly what I need. And so this is what I mean by a capture history for each fish. And so I have a one every time it was captured and a zero every time it was not captured. And so if you scroll down you can see in several different fish, you can see different capture histories. Great! And so that is what I need for R. So I'm going to go ahead and save this as a CSV file. I'm going to save that in the homework folder. And I'm going to save, I'm going to call this one um, Silver Carp Data for JS, Jolly Seaver. And I'm going to save that as a CSV. And I'm going to close it. And now we're going to go to R and import it. Okay, here we are in R Studio. And what we need to first do is import that data set we just created. So from text, and I saved it in homework, and I called it silver carp data for JS. And so for a name, I'm going to name mine js.dat. Now notice that what it did here. It's guessing wrong about the column names, probably because the column names are dates and it's a little confused. So you always want to check this before you import. You see that it's calling you know the columns v1, v2, and it's got my column names is actually the first row of data, and that's going to screw everything up. Why it did that is if you come up here where it has heading, it chose no, but you should change that to yes. And when you do that, you see it fixed it, but it did add an X and it changed those dates. So because we had the columns labeled with you know dates at the top, that made our studio unhappy. And so a lot of times it will do this correctly the first time. So just make sure you do that. Check heading. This looks good now, and I'm going to go import. And if you look here at JSDAT, it's got those capture histories for each fish. So I'm going to go here now to my little short program for doing Jolly Seaber, my little script. And so the first thing we have to do is load in the FSA package. So I'm just going to select that row, control enter, and now that package is entered. This first line is going to create a summary of those capture histories. And so hold.dat is going to hold that the data in a summary. That's a name that we're giving it. Cap hist sum 
will take the capture histories and summarize them. And it's going to look in JSDAT, which is where our raw data are. That's the capture histories we just made. And you see that we have columns to use equal negative one. If we come back here to our capture histories, you see the first column is a fish ID, and we can't use that in Jolly Seaver. We need to ignore that. These are the capture histories, these ones and zeros. And so by saying call history, your columns to use minus one, it says ignore that first column. All right, that's what that means. So I'm going to hit control return. And now we have the capture history summarized. If I want to look at that, I can come over here and, and click on hold.dat to see what's in there. And you see it's got a bunch of stuff. None of this is really helpful. I'm going to come down here in R, and I'm going to type hold.dat. And if I look, you see you've got several things in that. And what you've got is, um, for example, here's a summary of the capture histories. So capture history 00001 happened 285 times. Those are all the fish that were not captured until the last day. Here you've got capture history 000010. 374 fish have this capture history. Those are fish that were captured on the second to last day and never captured again, right? And so then this capture history is 000011. 30 fish had this capture history. Those are fish that were captured on the second to last day and then recaptured on the last day. See how that works? And then down here you have a summary and this is similar, you know, a lot of, uh, these, these are summary data for each sample date. Um, here you've got capture histories on each date by the last capture date. So this is sort of that table that I showed you earlier. Um, and so you see that, that R automatically created that for us. And so you don't really need to study any of this. I'm just showing you that it's there. We'll come back to our script. You see our next command is population estimate. So this is a, a variable or a vector that's going to hold the values that we want. And that's going to be the result of MR open. That's the command for mark recapture on an open population. And we're going to feed it this hold.dat that we just created. And if you see this little symbol here, that's the same thing as equals. So we can change that to equals and it'll still work. And so when I hit control return, that ran. And so now our population estimate from the Jolly Seaver is stored in this pop est vector. And so if we do a summary of pop est, and we come down here and look, now we have all the values we need from Jolly Seaver. And there's a lot of stuff here. The only one we're really worried about is this column right here, N. That's the population estimate. And so for the first sample, we don't have a population estimate because we didn't, you know, we only marked that first day. We had no recaps. And so then on the next samples, we have recaps. And so you see our estimated population size is 4,300 on that date, 5,900 on that date, 1,428, 1,167, and then no, no estimate for the last sample. So for each of those sample dates, we have an estimate of the size of the population. Then of course, the advantage of doing this in R is that we can get 95% confidence intervals. That's this command here. So we have confident of that same pop est vector. And so I'm going to hit control return. And if I come back down here, you see I've got the N lower confidence interval and the N upper confidence interval. And so on that um, sample number two, our estimate of population size was 4,369.1. And the confidence interval is 414.3 to 8323.9. And so you see we've got a confidence interval for each one of these sample sizes for each of these sample dates. That's pretty cool. 
That's all there is to it.